welcome to my channel. Oh boy, it's been a long time since I have done one of these, um, I call it travel time chit chat where I am running some errands and you are coming along with me. I hit record and I just talk to you while I drive because passenger seat is empty. I'm actually running right now to, um, there's this truck place called Route 11, truck Route 11 and they work on um, RVs and big trucks. And Tony is going to drop off the new to us RV that we just bought. Uh, if you've been following my channel, you know that in 2020, sales were just off the chain. And 2021 was really good that we ended up buying an RV. Um, every year we were taking these vacations where we were driving to um, California from we live in New York northern New York right up near the Canadian border and we had taken a trip uh, over to California and we were in Tony's Jeep actually we went to Utah that trip we've done we've done route 66 in his in his Jeep and then we were driving to um, Moab Utah in his Jeep to hit some trails we had done the mountains in Colorado where like Ure and Telluride and all that which was I'll tell you, if you have a Jeep or any type of off-road vehicle that you can take on those trails in that area, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Mother Nature was just absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and just a sight to be seen. So we did that and on the way there, we were getting hotel rooms and stuff and we kept seeing these RVs pulling Jeeps. And we were just like, you know what, should we look at buying a motorhome? and pull the Jeep instead of driving the Jeep all over, then we could stop when we wanted to at rest areas or whatever and spend the night, Cracker Barrels, Walmarts, all this thing. So we ended up buying an RV. It was a used 2002 um, Class C, they call them. So they look like a truck in the front and then they have the motorhome in the back. And we really, really enjoyed it we didn't want to spend a lot of money uh, we spent I think it was twenty two thousand dollars when we bought it and it was a nice entry-level vehicle I mean it was old but the interior had been just really really well kept and you know, we did some upgrades to it put new flooring down and last year Tony and I really started talking about how much we really have enjoyed this and maybe it's time to upgrade to a newer one so we just bought we had a Jayco Greyhawk and uh, 2002 and now we just bought a 2012 wait a minute was it two no it was a 2003 J Jayco I think I don't know <laughs> but anyway we just bought a 2012 um, Fleetwood Storm so it's a class A uh, but it is a gasoline class A not a diesel um, so it's just kind of like the next step up for us and we'll see how we like the class A and if it's uh, um, honestly the big thing with this one is is it has a couch we only had a chair and a table in our other one and there were times when I just didn't want to sit on the couch anymore I mean on the um, on the table or if I was working or whatever, I would just wanted another place to sit. And it turned out the place for me to go sit ended up being on the bed. And I, I was like, we just really wish we had a couch. So we ended up getting one that has a couch. I'm gonna put together a video and I'll throw it up on here on this channel. But we have a couch. Uh, the, the couch is across from the table, which is something I really, really wanted. So when we have people that are camping with us and if they're gonna come in and hang out, uh, we have people who still tent camp or, you know, camp where they don't have air conditioning. So if it's really hot, they can come and hang out in our RV and we can play cards. We can just have, you know, have dinner in the cooler air. And uh, I wanted something so if we're sitting at the table or, you know, two people, four people can be sitting at the table, then we can have other people still sitting on the couch and sit across from each other to have conversations versus a lot of the RVs have a table and then next to it like in the same row is the couch and I'm like well that's good if you are not going to use it for company but if you're going to use it for yourself it is nice having a separate like living room area and a separate kitchen area um, 
But anyway, so we're going to try this out. I'm really excited for it. There's a couple things I don't like. The shower seems to be a little bit smaller and it's got a huge step up into it. So, oh, and it doesn't have a door. It's got a shower curtain, which I don't like shower curtains. I haven't had a shower curtain in many years since we moved to New York. We've got glass doors on our showers and, um, and then our other in the class C that we have, whose name is Roy, he's got uh, a glass door. I guess, I guess it's glass or plastic, one or the other, but it's, it's like a hard door rather than a curtain. And I know for me, being a larger woman, being in a shower, if, the, if there's any breeze and the shower curtain blows in a little bit, like there's not a lot of room in there, so it's just gonna catch me and it's gonna stick to me. I mean, I haven't used it yet, so we'll see. Hold on, I got a tickle in my throat. Got my good old glass, my, my tumbler. I love the color. I got it from Aldi's for $9.99. Awesome. I have become an Aldi's fanatic where I would say probably for the last three months, I do all my grocery shopping now pretty much at Aldi's. I shouldn't say all, but you know, a big percentage of it now is there. I still go to BJ's and Walmart every now and then, but they have this thing called like Aldi's Finds of the Week or something like that. Aldi's Isle of Shame is what they call it online on Facebook. And every week, Aldi's puts out new hard goods items and, and sometimes clothing and stuff, but not non-food non items. And it changes every week and it's only there for that week. So, I mean, it'll be there sometimes later than that week, but if it sells out, they don't restock it. So if there's something you want, you better go get it that week. So I have been checking every week, like what's coming out, what's coming out. And then I run and go get whatever it is that I want. And this was one of the ones that I didn't realize was coming out. But when I got there, I saw it and I was like, all right, it's just like a Stanley, honestly, but it's $9.99. So it's a lot cheaper. Isn't it? Aren't most Stanleys like 40 or 50 bucks? I don't have one, so I don't know. Well, I wanted to give you an update. I know, seven minutes in, and I haven't really even talked reselling. Um, but I just wanted to at least give you guys an update of what's going on with the RV. We are getting ready to be heading out on a long trip. And I'm excited because we've got a great group of people that are going to be coming and housing while we're gone. So my poor Pippi will have company the whole time. So Pippa's my cat who is just loves to be snuggled and petted and all that kind of stuff. So I got people coming to stay at the house while we're gone and very, very happy for that. Um, all right, so <clears throat> let me clear my throat, get you guys going. Let me give you an update of what's going on with me in the reselling world. So with this upcoming trip, I'm gonna be putting my store on vacation mode. Well, I would say probably about two weeks ago, I have just been really focused on that because we just got the RV a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was even last week. Maybe it's only been a week. No, maybe two weeks. A week to two weeks. <clears throat> I think that might be a cop behind me. Um, and I have been really focusing on getting the house, or getting the house, getting the RV all set up. We had to transfer everything from Roy to, I haven't told you our new name is Mac because um, it's a Fleetwood, so we call it Fleetwood Mac. I've been transferring everything over, so I've really been putting listing on the back burner because I also know I'm gonna be running a vacation mode for at least a month, at least a month. So I ended up saying, okay, I'm gonna stop listing. And one of the things I've been doing since the beginning of March, I think it was about the beginning of March I really started, so it's been about a month, is I use a cross-listing program called Flip. F-L-Y-P, which I don't know if there's a link down below, but I do have some videos on my channel. Um, I do get $10, $10, I think it's a $10 Amazon gift card if anybody signs up under my link. Uh, I've been using that to cross post to other platforms, but most of my stuff had been cross posted originally anyhow. Uh, what Flip has, re has actually made me uh, start doing more often is delisting and listing or I should say delisting and relisting. So they have a feature that I kind of ignored since I've been a member since July. And 
you can go in and you can do 10 at a time and it will sort your items uh, by the longest they've been listed in within Flip. So I take stuff from eBay and I put it into Flip and then from Flip I'll send it to Poshmark, Macari, Etsy. A lot of them were already in these other platforms so I just had to like link them into Flip type of thing but that's that's not this isn't a flip video <clears throat> so what ended up happening was I ended up taking 10 items at a time you can delist so I sorted it sorted it by the longest it's been listed so in this case it'll say 60 plus days and I said okay I'm going to start taking down anything that's been listed for 60 days on eBay Macari and Poshmark and I'm gonna be relisting them. And it's so easy, so quick and easy to do it via flip. Well, one of the things I have found while doing it via flip is that every now and then I would get probably one out of a hundred, maybe not, maybe not even that, maybe not that many. Maybe not even one out of a hundred, maybe like one out of 200. I will find had actually been sold on a platform and I forgot to take it down from Flip. So Flip does not have the ability to automate. Hey, I see Mac. He's in front of me now. He, he left and I had to, to run back in the house and get my phone. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me for keep clearing my throat. I've got a frog in my throat today. But, um, which the peepers are out. They are so loud at night. Uh, so I have been taking things down and then relisting them automatically with a click of a button. It takes it down and relists it. And every now and then it'll give you a warning. So sometimes it gives me a warning, which I've talked to Flip about this. If I have something, I have, think maybe I've got four items on eBay out of my 2,000 plus items listed that are in the eBay Motors category. And for some reason in Flip, eBay Motors is not one of the categories you can list in, um, which they're looking into that. I think eBay may have, I don't know if recently or whatever, they took it out of like the main, like eBay, Motors, whatever. Like you would have eBay, clothing, women's, whatever. So I feel like they've taken that and it's not even under the mother of eBay anymore. It's under eBay Motors, which is different it's different so anyway when I delisted those items I get an error message and which is great it shows up right immediately right on the screen as you see see it delisting it and then relisting it'll show you relisted or what it done or whatever it says and then every now and then all of a sudden it'll give you like this error message and it will say category something to do with the category so then there's a little arrow and I click on it, it brings me to the listing in flip I can click on view listing to look at it on eBay, or I can just make the changes if I know what it is. So in this case, I went in and made the changes to the category, but then I had to edit it in eBay. So I know it sounds complicated, but this is like very infrequently. Okay, I have four items out of 2000 where that was an issue. Um, but every now and then it would tell me this item cannot be relisted because it's been sold. And I'm like, whoops. I sold that. Like I just had one. What was it? I, just before I left, I was doing this. Uh, literally any second of the day, I've been doing this whole delisting and relisting to get all two. I'm hoping to get all 2,000 items delisted and relisted. And I said, oh, I sold that. I said, must have been on eBay. So I went and looked because most of them have been on eBay because that's like my mother platform. That's the one I worry about the most. That's the one I don't want anything to stay listed if it's sold. So like that one I'm just really on top of, right? Because we know the penalties for when you sell something you don't have in stock are really pretty bad when it comes to um, eBay. Where Macari and Poshmark and Etsy, they're just a little more lenient. Although you still get a little warning. Like I know in Macari, they sent me a little warning one time being like, hey, you've had too many cancellations. So with the help of Flip, it's really has, I feel like it's really made things a lot easier. So I ended up finding out that I actually had sold this on Macari. It was already taken down from eBay because it actually told me it can't be relisted because it was sold, but it was giving me the error message on the Macari listing and the eBay listing. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously I didn't sell it in both places. 
So upon further investigation, I found that I had sold it on Macari when I went to eBay because eBay is my, again, my mother platform and I put like my custom SKU and all that. So when I sell something on Macari or Poshmark or Etsy, I will go to eBay to find the item in my actives, not to, not always to just to take it down, which ultimately is the goal, but to find where it is. So I'll look at my custom SKU within eBay and it will tell me it's in bin number B2. So then I know to go to B2 and get that item. So in this case, I had taken it down off from eBay at the time, but hadn't gone back to, into Flip and taken it down from Flip. So it was still listed on Poshmark. So I found that that has really helped it. But I will tell you, without listing anything, only doing delisting and relisting in Flip, I would say probably 50 to 100 a day, maybe more, depending on what I'm doing that day. <clears throat> but usually at least 50. Delisting and relisting 50 items a day on the three platforms has really helped my sales. I'm still packaging almost the same amount that I would be packaging when I was listing and not delisting and relisting, but just listing stuff all the time. I've never been somebody who on a regular basis was delisting and relisting. Now I know there's a lot of people, I hear them on YouTube and the Facebook groups that will do it manually. They'll go into eBay and they end sell similar and relist whatever way you, you do it because there's two different ways I will tell you that um, flip ends and sells similar even though it's called delist relist or whatever it does not relist your item it sells similar uh, so you lose your watchers and all that but you know what if, I'm sorry but if you haven't bought if you've been watching my item and you haven't bought it in a couple months and maybe you've only been watching it for a, a week or whatever. I mean, there's always a chance you're going to take losing those watchers and then hopefully they'll refind your item or whatever. But if I am, if I haven't sold that item and it's been listed, and, and a lot of the stuff I've been ending recently, I listed in October. And if it didn't sell through the holiday season, I mean, I'm selling it. <laughs> the stuff are selling now. And a lot of the stuff, like when I get in summer, winter, it doesn't matter the season, I don't hang on to it. I list it. Because in the summer, there, let's say in the middle of winter, there are people who still wear short sleeve shirts or they're taking a vacation and need a bathing suit or, or whatever, right? Or they live in warmer climate, so they still need that warmer weather items. Well, I list things year round, doesn't matter the season. Well, one of the things I think is probably help, helping because I've been listing a lot of clothes. Like since my mom passed and since Tony and I have both been losing weight, we, I've been selling my mother's clothing plus my clothing and Tony's clothing. And there has been a lot, I mean, honestly, a lot of bread and butter, like a lot of Croft and Barrow, Lane Bryant, Fashion Bug, Dress Barn, um, Torrid, been selling a lot of that, a lot of plus size, mostly plus size clothing, been selling a lot of. Well, as I've been delisting and relisting, things I listed in October that were maybe more summer, more seasonal for the warmer weather, they're now beginning to show up as like a new listing again. And people are seeing them and buying them, like my capri pants, my shorts, like those are starting to really start to sell and take off. And you know, it's funny, I say to, I, I laugh with my husband because <clears throat> I say laugh. I'm probably the only one laughing. Somebody, I'll list something for $15. 12 or 15 seems to be my average asking price on clothing. And I'll sell something and, or somebody will send me an offer for $10. Let's say on like a shirt. Let's say like this shirt right here, right? I list it and I sell it for $10. And I'm always like, 10 bucks, even after fees and everything, I'm probably going to make at least seven. This is a shirt I would sell for like 50 cents or a quarter at my garage sale. So the fact that I can sell something and some of the stuff I'm like, I wore that so much. Like, I was just going to say something. I was going to swear, but I would wear that stuff 
some of this so much my favorite clothing that I'm getting rid of because it doesn't fit me anymore because it's too big yay 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 um so those items I'm like I cannot believe I just sold that for ten dollars like it's exciting especially when it's your own stuff and you really don't have anything in it because I you know some of the stuff I'm like this is worn out in spots it's very worn it's like bald and whatever like I'm really honest with my stuff so uh, the fact that people are buying, I'm, exci I'm excited. And they've been getting it, leaving really good reviews and so forth. But I really think that delisting and relisting has really helped. And the other thing is, when Macari changed their rules last week or the week before, where there's no longer seller fees, they gave me the option, which I, th I think, I don't know if everybody had the option, but the, the new things with... Macari said that you had to make a change, some type of edit on your listing to be a, to turn it into a no fee listing. If you did nothing with the listing, supposedly you're still going to be charged fees. I don't know. I don't know how they know that, but whatever. So one of the things they said was, hey, now that you're not getting charged fees anymore, um, would you like us to reduce your prices store wide by 10%? It'll put it into that no fee area because you're making a change to it. Um, and I'm like, heck yeah. So I did that. So immediately everything became no no fees. But now everything was reduced by 10%. By me doing this through Flip, Flip said when I when I imported it into Flip, and you know, and it was in Macari or whatever, it was it, the price and flip is whatever it was initially priced at when I listed it. So if I listed something for 20 and Macari said, hey, we're going to discount it by 10%, so now it's $18, by me delisting and relisting it, I'm bringing it back up to $20. So that's something I really wanted to do and was really important to me to get it back up to whatever I wanted to ask. Because people like to offer you things on Macari, so I like to leave some you know, a little bit of legal room in there for negotiating if somebody makes an offer. And so that's been really good. But I just, I mean, I don't, I think last week, I think right now I have probably 20 open orders that I'm waiting to be rated on in Macari. Like, that's unheard of for me, for Macari. Like, I would probably have three items at, at any time that would be open, waiting for some, for me to be either shipping it or, or um, for, to be rated on it or whatever. So, for me to have so many orders right now that are just out there, and actually, I think I got rated by one of them today that I had to go in and put my, my feedback on. Uh, this delisting and relisting is really working. So if you use a cross listing, if you're using list perfectly, if you're using Vendu, um, I don't know, whatever else is out there, but I, again, I use Flip. If you're using any of those, look at that feature and try it out. Say, you know what, I'm gonna try this for the next two weeks and see if you notice a change in your sales. Uh, I, I mean, nothing really has changed except for that for me. Ex I'm, if anything, I'm not even listing. Again, I'm not listing anything. Yet, I'm still packaging orders every day. So, I I don't really feel like there's been a hiccup in my business. Now, when I get back from my trip, I'm really excited to start listing again and do the delist, relist. Continue that. I'm gonna, that's going to be a thing every morning. When I'm drinking my coffee, that's what I'm doing. Delisting and relisting. 100 items. 10, 10 sets of 10. And if I can sit there, and I'm telling you, it's really quick. Like you, you select the items, you say which platforms you want to delist and relist them on, and then it'll go and, and it'll go through the process. And it probably takes well, if I do ten of them on three platforms, right? So that would be like thirty listings. It would t it takes maybe two minutes. I'm guessing about two minutes. Not very long. And a lot of times I'll click off, read something on eBay or Facebook, and then I like click back and it's done. And then I'd scan down really quick to see, are there any errors that I have to deal with? Um, and I would say right now there probably is a, a few errors every single time. 
something is wrong with the category on Poshmark or Macari would be my two biggest things that I've had to go in and edit. But it is literally like a couple clicks and I'm done with the editing. So I mean, it's just really, really fast and uh, it's just working. So yeah, so when I can start doing that and listing, I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen with all of that. Well, I am now at Route 11 and I'm gonna get my hobby here. I'm gonna pull in. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the storm. Let me see if I can show you guys. Let me put it in park. Let me see if I can show you. <laughs> Hold my hand. Watch my hand. Hold on. Okay. I don't know if you can see because I can't see you, but this is our new baby right here. I don't know if you can see it because I can't see what you're seeing, but that's it. Uh, so, all right, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I need some subscribers. I've been losing people because I have not been doing videos as often um, as I used to do, but uh, whatever. If you enjoy it, watch, watch and uh, like, subscribe. Leave me a comment, leave me an emoji. They say that that helps your algorithm. Tony's like, what is she doing? Yes, I'm talking. I'm doing a travel time. All right, see you guys later. Hope things are going really well for you guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.